so following up with um, some applications for trigonometry and Pythagoras, we're going to look at some angles uh, that we call angle of elevation and some that we call angle of depression. So an angle of elevation is when you're looking up at something from the ground, and you can think about that like elevation, you know, it goes higher. You're looking up to see how tall a mountain is, for instance. So it's going up, because you're gaining elevation as you look up. And it is usually measured from the ground, so if you think about the ground being a horizontal, the bottom, if I'm standing at the bottom of this um, building at a distance away, and I look up to this roof there, I can see a cat. So if I look up, as I'm looking up, I'm creating an angle of elevation. I'm looking from the ground up. And so I could say here that I'm looking up at an angle of elevation of, I don't know, 60 degrees. So I'm looking up from the ground level by 60 degrees to see that there's a cat on the roof. And the part that's nice about this is that with these problems, we often see right angle triangles. So if you notice that a building should be perpendicular to the ground, you get a 90 degree in there. So you get one side of a triangle here, one side along the bottom, and then you get this angle coming through here. And we usually assume that um, we won't worry about the distance between how high off the ground the eyeballs are. Um, but in some more complicated problems, you do have to actually take into consideration how tall the person is. But here, we're not going to worry about that. So that's what I mean by angle of elevation. You're literally looking up from the ground, and you're measuring that angle. So the elevation, again, is from the ground up. So you go from the ground up with your angle. Now, angle of depression, if you want to think about depression by, you know, maybe thinking about being down about something. So angle of depression is measuring down. So you're looking down from the horizon. So if I think about this little mouse on top of a road cone, and he looks off into the distance, and he can see a little piece of cheese. So as he's gazing, he's going to gaze out along the horizon. And the horizon is just a flat line, so looking out into the distance. And our angle of depression is made by measuring down from the horizon. So if he looks out to the horizon, he'll then glance down towards the cheese. And the angle of depression is from the horizon down. Okay, so from the horizon down. So you could say here that this mouse has an angle of depression. And I'll make it up again, something like 50 degrees. And so that's 50 degrees measured again from the horizon down to what he's, the angle he's actually looking to. So you measure down on the angle of depression. And again, if you pay attention here, you can make a little right angle triangle. The ground that the cheese is on, up vertically through the cone to where the mouse is sitting, and now you can use trigonometry and Pythagoras to help solve this problem. If, for instance, I wanted to know how far away from the, um, the cone the cheese was. So that's how we draw these things. And one other bit that I want to just talk about real quick is that on angle of depression, when you're looking down, um, sometimes it's helpful to remember what we call our, our parallel line rules from geometry. So if I want to try to find information out about this triangle, based on what I've got, I only know that there's a 50 degree angle up here, but I don't actually know any of the angles in the triangle. So there's two ways we can look at solving this problem. One is that you might notice that there is a 90 degree corner here between the horizon and the vertical underneath the mouse through the cone. So if I know that this part of that 90 degrees is 50, how can I figure out what this part of the triangle is to find out this angle of the triangle inside of here? Well, together, 50 and that have to add up to 90, so I know that this part of the triangle inside here will be 40. So from the vertical out to where he's looking is 40 degrees. And now another trick for that one is remembering your parallel line rules. So if you have two parallel lines and you draw a transverse through them, we have something that we call alternate angles. And that's a reminder that if this is 50 degrees, this angle inside of here making that Z shape is also 50 degrees. So if we think about that in this diagram, if that's where our cone is, we have 50 degrees from angle of depression. Well, what also becomes 50 degrees is the angle of elevation from the cheese's point of view. So we get 50 degrees down here as well, because we have two parallel lines, the horizon and the ground, and they make that Z shape for alternate angles. So 
With the angle of elevation, it's pretty simple because the angle they give you is just going to be inside the diagram already, inside the right angle triangle that you're going to be solving with. But for the angle of depression, you've got to think of one of two ways to try to figure out an angle inside of that triangle. And one of them is to just think, well, what adds up to 90 and fill in the top part of the triangle. Or the other one is to recognize that you have these parallel lines that are making alternate angles. The angle of depression from the observer up at the top will be the same as the angle of elevation from the object down at the bottom from the ground. So two ways to think about that. Alright, so in the next video we'll take some look at some of these examples and see how to solve them.